Coming up on today's show, a major ground up rewrite to autopilot is coming in six to 10 weeks time that's a quote, quantum leap on today's autopilot system. Lucid announces 300 kilowatt DC and V to G connectivity with its upcoming air sedan. And Elon Musk ponders out loud on the internet about making Tesla's play elevator music through their external speakers. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of Transport Evolved News. We are almost at the end of August and I've spent the last week waking way too many preserves and pickles. Gotta love the harvest season. If you're interested in how to win a Tesla of your dreams or 50,000 US dollars in cash, all while supporting a great cause, then stick around to the end of the show and I'll tell you more. Ever since Tesla's first announcement of the prospect of autonomous vehicle capabilities, that was back at the reveal event for the Tesla Model S dual motor, we've watched with interest as Tesla has pushed the boundaries of self-driving technology. Today's autopilot is already pretty competent, offering somewhere between a level two and level three autonomous experience. But this week, Tesla CEO Elon Musk promised that a new ground up code rewrite of Tesla's autopilot software would offer a quote, quantum leap in capabilities. According to Musk, who's been using an early version of this rewrite on his own personal car, the software will make it possible for Teslas to operate door to door with practically no interventions despite going through construction zones and meeting other challenges en route. I cannot wait to see it in operation, but while Tesla promises it's coming very soon, I'm not sure that the regulators will agree quite yet. Alongside its planned all-electric car like the XC40 Recharge, Volvo has been busy rolling out new and improved plug-in hybrids of existing models as part of its goal of having internal combustion, plug-in hybrid and electric variants of each of its cars in the market. This week, Volvo announced existing plug-in hybrid models would get a major price cut for the 2021 model year, making them far more affordable than they once were. For example, its S60 plug-in hybrid has received a $7,750 price cut for this model year, which pushes its starting price under $49,000 before incentives for the first time. The S90, XC60 and XC90 PHEVs also get price cuts to bring them within reach of more people. Sadly though, none of these have impressive all-electric ranges and are only really good for short all-electric commutes. Volvo isn't the only car company making changes for this model year. Porsche announced midweek that its Taycan electric sports sedan will get a host of new features and functionality for the 2021 model year, as well as new interior and exterior options. In terms of tech, front and center, quite literally, is a new head-up display as well as a smart raise function. In addition, all new Taycans will come with ISO 15118 as standard, which will allow owners to authenticate and pay for charging sessions simply by plugging into a compatible CCS rapid charging station. There's also a new feature to allow customers to turn down the maximum charge rate of their car at a DC quick charger to around 200 kilowatts. This suggests that maybe, just maybe, the 270 kilowatt DC quick charging offered by the Taycan may not be great for the battery pack. Ahead of its five from one stock split next Friday, Tesla's share price has continued to soar this week as shorts get badly burned and shareholders enjoy seeing their portfolios rise in value. In fact, with Tesla now trading at $2,000 per share, its market value has surpassed that of Walmart, with only eight companies on the S&P 500 being worth more. Johnson & Johnson, Visa, Berkshire Hathaway, Facebook, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon and Apple. That's not bad for a company that's only 17 years old, and frankly not bad for a company that started the year trading at just $400 and $30 per share. There is definitely a bubble building in the market as companies with far less to show for it than Tesla are also enjoying Tesla's success. I'm gonna say no more. 
As Tesla's third electric car and second mass-produced electric car, the high-end Model X is unlike anything we've seen before in the plug-in or automotive marketplace. Powerful, fast and spacious, it's also the go-to for well-off families who need something large but want it to be all electric. It's also quite obviously the vehicle that Chinese company Human Horizons have decided to base their latest electric car off. Meet the Hi-Fi X, and it's not quite a Model X form factor. Called an evolvable super SUV by its creator, the Hi-Fi X features two-piece rear hinge doors that split in order to allow access to the rear. Unlike the Model X, the side of the door hinges backwards like a regular backwards hinging door and the top hinge upwards to give easy access to the rear. It promises level 3 self-driving, 610 km range and more. As they say, imitation is the way to piss a rival off, right? In the last couple of weeks, I have seen a number of electric car startups head onto the stock market, most usually through the backdoor process of a reverse merger a route to the stock market that is both quicker than a traditional IPO and also involves a lot less red tape. Modular EV mobility company Canoo is the latest to follow this route, announcing its intention this week to go through a reverse merger with a blank check company in the next few weeks. It will earn about $600 million in funds during the process and, of course, allow it to access the increasingly crazy sums of money being thrown at any automotive startups from Lordstown Motors through to Nikola Motor. Canu says its skateboard EV technology will spawn a series of different vehicles, all accessible through its subscription-based service. But as of right now, it hasn't offered a single thing to the public. Last week, I told you about the unofficial 517-mile EPA rating for the upcoming Lucid Air sedan, something which could make this car the longest-legged EV on sale if it gets to the market before the upcoming Tesla Roadster 2. But this week, EV owner and tinkerer James Coughlin showcased his solution to long-range EV travel, a custom camping trailer he nicknamed the T-Rex that he built to be towed behind a Tesla Model X. While he no longer owns the Model X, he did a range test last year and managed more than 400 miles with a headwind, thanks to the combined 185 kilowatt hours of storage between his Model X and the trailer. In ideal situations, he calculated more than 515 miles should have been possible with the T-Rex. No stranger to hack DVs, I can't wait to see what his next project is. Nice one, James. We still have two more weeks until we see the production Lucid Air in the metal, but this week, Lucid continued its trickle-down information about its first production car by detailing the vehicle's onboard charging specifications. And I've got to say, it seems pretty impressive. First off, there's a 300 kilowatt DC quick charge capability, as well as a 19.2 onboard AC charger that will charge at speeds of up to 80 miles per hour from Lucid's own branded home charging station. But that's not even the best bit. According to the company, that branded charging station is actually capable of two-way power transfer, making the Lucid Air the very first production EV to get AC two-way power transfer from the factory. Its massive battery pack could quite easily keep your home running for a few days, or maybe even a few weeks, depending on how energy efficient you are. Sadly though, it is likely to be expensive, and we just don't know how expensive it will be yet. As many of you will know, the US EPA has been attempting to roll back emissions requirements for cars, and when the state of California's Air Resource Board and several major automakers tried to sit down to discuss voluntary, more strict emissions targets for the state, President Trump's Justice Department opened an antitrust investigation against everyone involved. That investigation ended without action, and now these automakers, Ford, Volkswagen, Honda, Volvo and BMW, have signed an agreement with CARB on the new emissions standards. GM, Fiat and Toyota have sadly not joined the agreement. And now it's time for short shorts. New trademark applications from Zero suggests that the motorcycle company is bringing two new models to the market in the near future. The first, the DSR-X, suggests a powerful off-road capable sibling to the SRF and SRS, while the FXE suggests a more affordable trials bike. 
Volkswagen says it's officially begun production of the ID4 electric crossover at its production facility in Zweikau in Germany. While the car has yet to get its official reveal, Volkswagen says it will begin deliveries of the ID4 at the tail end of this year. Tesla Giga Nevada is getting a brand new production line just in order to expand Tesla's battery cell production and demand. In order to help pay for this, its partner Panasonic has invested a further $100 million into the venture. Bollinger announced this week that it's moving its entire headquarters to a larger facility. This is all part of a company-wide expansion that will see the number of staff more than double. The B1 and B2 have yet to enter into production, but with those price tags, they are now really starting to look very much like niche vehicles. Elon Musk confirmed this week that when Tesla brings the second generation Roadster to market, or maybe we should say the Tesla Roadster 2, that the high-end high-performance car will get center lock wheel nuts. These are more commonly found in race cars rather than road cars and could cause headaches at tire places. Electrify America continued its rollout of charging across the US this week by announcing a brand new partnership with Love's Travel Stops. In total, five Love's Rest Stops have already had their DC Quick Chargers activated, and there are two more to come. Troubled electric car startup, NIO, announced its battery as a service option this week, which allows customers the opportunity to lease rather than buy their car's battery pack outright. While I'm sure some customers will enjoy it, Historically, battery rental hasn't done all that well. Green King, a major UK pub chain, has announced a deal with Drive Energy to install high-powered charging stations at many of its locations throughout the country. While drinking and driving is most definitely a bad thing, many locations are actually also restaurants. Scotland has announced a new £9 million ultra-low emission bus fund that's designed to help bus operators in the nation switch from diesel to zero emission and low emission buses. Operators large and small are being invited to apply for the funds. A limit on supercharger maximum power in Europe that we reported on a few weeks ago appears to have now been lifted, with Tesla customers now reporting that their cars are charging at much higher rates than they once were. Tesla has unfortunately still not detailed the reason for the original cap. A European startup called Volta Trucks has broken cover this week and is promising us the reveal of a brand new electric truck at the very start of September. We have little to go on right now, but Volta says its trucks are designed primarily for inner city delivery duties. A super low cost electric car called the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV made by the SAIC General Motors joint venture in China has received 50,000 orders in just 20 days. Under $4,000 worth in price, it has a tiny 13 kilowatt hour battery pack, but people want to buy it. Tesla is apparently seeking approval from the FTC to license a short range interactive motion sensing system inside its cars. Tesla said it would enhance anti-theft systems and allow the car to detect if someone, a child or a pet, had been left alone in the car. Chinese automotive startup Xpeng, or Xiaopeng in China, has announced its intent to raise 1.11 billion US dollars through a US initial public offering. While I have been pretty vocal about concern of an EV market bubble in recent weeks, I think IPOs are smarter than reverse mergers. General Motors has made a new trademark application which seems to merge the old Hummer H logo with the same kind of typeface mildly reminiscent of the EV1's logo. We'll likely get to see what the final logo looks like next month when the Hummer EV is revealed for the first time. Chinese battery firm and supplier to Tesla and many other OEM manufacturers has announced that it's working on a new battery chemistry that's both free from cobalt and free from nickel. Cattle says if it's successful, it could reduce battery costs as well as end concerns over ethical mining. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. A couple of weeks ago, we told you about the Rolls Royce once owned by the legendary musician Johnny Cash, a car that was not only converted to electric, but re-engineered with an entire Tesla underneath, ABS 
screen et al. inside. Well, this week we heard about more electric Rolls Royces, but instead of the one-off bespoke conversions, these are production restorations of the Rolls Royce Phantom 5 and Rolls Royce Cloud. Restored from the ground up and given a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack and CCS quick charging, these retro icons are certainly not daily drivers, but they capture the glory of the car's heyday without the engine. Having ridden in both internal combustion engine versions of these cars, I'd love to ride an electric version. But with the price tag starting in the mid three and four hundred thousand pound sterling mark, I severely doubt I will. And finally, it doesn't matter who you are or how many times you've actually traveled in one. The chances are you have an opinion on elevator music. You know, the stuff that's sometimes piped into the lobbies of large buildings or the elevators themselves to stifle small talk and pass the time while you go from floor to floor? Well, it turns out, at least if Elon Musk is serious, that he's a fan of elevator music. And this week he threatened to make it possible for Tesla owners to pipe elevator music through their car's external speakers to, quote, play snake jazz or Polynesian elevator music through its outside speakers, wherever you go. If I am honest, I think this is just Elon being Elon and making a veiled moan about the fact that electric cars in the US must have some form of noisemakers to warn pedestrians of their presence. That said, I shouldn't be so sure. Elon made fart mode a thing now, didn't he? And on that note, it is the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's episode. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, where to attend local monthly meetups, or just find EV owners to talk about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. And if you'd like to win a Tesla of your choice or $50,000 in cash, well, make sure you pay attention right now because I'm about to tell you about the sixth annual Tesla raffle from the Chicago Chesed Fund. The Chicago Chesed Fund is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping families in crisis and has more than 40 programs and services in operation. In a world where COVID-19 is ravaging communities, its work has never been more important. And throughout this year, the Chicago-based charity has been helping people stay safe, fed, employed and healthy. To find out more about the program or to buy tickets, head to ccfraffle.com, where you can get two tickets for $175 by using the promo code Transport Evolved. There are only a total of 5,555 tickets available and they are selling really quick. And the draw takes place in less than two weeks on Labor Day. So go and grab your tickets right now if you want to take part and you're feeling lucky. We'd love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do feel able, please consider supporting us using any of the three links below. If you can't do that, know that just watching and interacting with our content really, really helps the algorithms. So if you do, thank you. I'll be back next week with more great content for you all to enjoy. But in the meantime, stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live, strive for equality, be most excellent to one another, wash your hands, wear a mask. And if you are eligible to vote this November in the US, please, do make sure you're on the voter roll, eh? If you don't vote, then you really can't complain about the results. Keep evolving.